If you have looked at real estate prices recently, you might have noticed that they're absolutely insane. As a young adult myself, the prospect of owning my own home is... distant, to say the least. Housing crises are happening all over the world, but one city that's often overlooked is Prague, Czech Republic. In this video, we'll explore the absolute state of housing affordability in the Czech capital city, why it's like this, and what could be done. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. Trying to build something in Prague is similar to trying to avoid rusting on the Tesla Cybertruck. According to the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index, the Czech Republic ranks 157th on dealing with construction permits, which puts it below countries like Tanzania, Ethiopia and Zimbabwe. That means that building something in this country is really expensive, takes a lot of time and is overall filled with headaches and delays. According to data from the Czech Statistical Office, 6,575 dwellings were completed in Prague in 2022. While housing construction is trending upwards, it's unfortunately still not enough. Prague's population is growing by tens of thousands of people every year, fueled by migration from the rest of the country and from abroad, and the housing supply isn't keeping up. Because of this, the loss of supply and demand cause rents and property prices to rise, making housing unaffordable for lots of people. The housing unaffordability combined with the complicated process of getting a construction permit compounds into another problem. Because of the high cost of construction, property developers focus on building higher end and luxury units, which means that the housing supply for the working and lower middle class is barely increasing. After all, that sweet, sweet real estate profit is too hard to let go. For an example of this, we can take a trip to the district of Smíchov in Prague, where a large, higher-end housing estate is being built right now, as of April 2024. This is Smíchov City, the single largest housing project after the Velvet Revolution. It is located right in the middle of the Smíchov district, located on the site of a former cargo train terminal. This terminal used to serve the Čekáde Tatra Industrial Works and the Starop Ramen Brewery, but in the 90s, when industrial production moved to Zličín, and the brewery stopped relying on trains, the train terminal became pretty much abandoned. The site sat about as abandoned as Hyperloop until the early 21st century. In 2009, plans were made for the demolition of the freight terminal and for the building of a massive new district. Because of the aforementioned bureaucracy and headaches, construction only started in 2020. Compared with the previous regime, this project was taken on and funded by private property developers. The project is split into two phases, and the whole project is slated for completion in 2032. The new district seems to have all the aspects of good urbanism, ground floor retail, good density, access to public transport, with a bus terminal, metro station, tram stop and train station nearby. Parking is supposed to be provided by a future park and ride garage. The project is also planned to feature services needed to make it a fully fledged district, such as a school and healthcare facilities. To top it off, the project is planned to be filled with greenery, rooftop solar panels, and the whole thing is supposed to be crossed by a kilometer-long pedestrian boulevard, promoting walking and cycling, rather than car usage. Although, for a nice-looking, modern, almost futuristic district compared to the rest of Smíchov, there are no plans for Tesla cars in tunnels underneath. That's such a missed opportunity. Unfortunately, Due to the central location, the fact that it's a completely new development, and because of the fancy image, the apartments in this district are really expensive. All of them, even the incomplete ones, are already sold out, but I managed to find the list of prices from 2020. The smallest, cheapest apartment, measuring in at just 37.6 square meters, or 404 square feet, cost 4.4 million Czech crowns, or 174,000 euros. Keep in mind that the median salary of a worker in Prague is 39,233 Czech crowns per month in 2020. Czech banks usually provide mortgages with 20% down payments, meaning that to get a mortgage for the smallest apartment in the district, you'd have to save up 23 months of the median salary if you manage to save all of it, which is obviously impossible. If you wanted to buy an apartment big enough to raise a family in, the price easily climbed up to tens of millions of crowns, so young, urban families were completely priced out. 
low rates of construction isn't the only thing contributing to Prague's crippling housing crisis. Next up... Short-term rentals, the plague of every semi-popular tourist city. Unfortunately, Prague has been hit extremely hard by this, compounded by the relatively low costs of real estate for overseas investors. A fancy 600,000 euro apartment in the city center is absolutely unaffordable for regular people, but if you're a wealthy Chinese, Russian, American, whatever investor looking to make bank renting it out to the millions of people coming to visit the city each year, it's basically a drop in the ocean compared to Paris, New York, Sydney, etc. The fact that services like Airbnb are pretty much unregulated as of the date of filming, and the fact that Czech property taxes are one of the lowest in Europe doesn't really help either. One other negative impact of short-term rentals is the depopulation of the city center. For centuries, the city center of Prague was populated by people of all walks of life, from the working class all the way to the wealthy. But now, due to the skyrocketing costs, and due to local businesses adapting to serve the needs of tourists rather than locals, less and less locals live in the city center of Prague each year. This trend forces locals out of the center and into the outer parts and suburbs of the city which brings numerous disadvantages, such as worse traffic congestion, longer commute times, and more. Next up, there are... A lot of citizens of Prague are against building new housing developments, even though sometimes, their arguments are absolutely silly. For an example of this, look at the district of Yizhny Mesto. Yizhny Mesto is a communist-era housing estate, full of tall commie blocks. The district is served by a metro station, which is adjacent to a cinema, which is barely used anymore. So, a developer came around and proposed building two tall apartment blocks on the site of the cinema. The good people of Yizhny Mesto had a bit of a meltdown, to say the least. For example, people complain about the fact that the tallest commie block wouldn't be the tallest building in Yizhny Mesto anymore. Or they complain about the buildings not having enough parking spaces even though an underground parking garage is planned and the buildings would be located literally right next to a metro station. All these cause a lot of issues, so let's look at some potential solutions. I believe that there are numerous measures that could be taken to mitigate the housing crisis. First, the process of getting a construction permit has to become simpler. It shouldn't take over a decade to start building something, like in the case of Smíchov City. The city grows way faster than construction permits are being granted, and that's a huge problem. Second of all, regulations for short-term rentals are desperately needed. Housing should serve primarily for housing residents of the city, not for housing stack parties. Third of all, a little bit of a more nuanced take, the image of real estate as the only good investment should be diminished. A lot of people in the Czech Republic, especially older people, Consider real estate as the best, and sometimes, the only investment. Real estate is the most commonly held investment in the country, for multiple reasons. First, the concept of investing your money didn't really exist during the communist times, as the regime taught people that stocks are worthless pieces of paper peddled by the capitalists. Second, after the fall of communism, investment scams and frauds ran rampant, which made people averse to investing into stocks and bonds. Third. Czech investors are usually risk-averse, meaning that a lot of people will leave money on the table for a sense of security. Fourth, Czech capital markets are quite underdeveloped compared to American or Western European capital markets. That means that to get decent returns, people would most likely have to invest in international stocks, which could make people nervous. Sadly, Wall Street bets for Czech people doesn't exist, and no one is yellowing their life savings into options of shares of Chess and Kofola although that would be pretty funny. All of this, combined with the aforementioned low property taxes, means that real estate is a very attractive investment. In my opinion, to mitigate the housing crisis, people should be educated on the merits of investing into different things than real estate. And lastly, the government could start large public housing projects, like in the previous regime. This would most likely be extremely politically unpopular, but to be honest, I'd much rather live in an ugly house or apartment than under a bridge. Anyway, thank you so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you want to support the channel, I've put some affiliate links in the description. If you buy something with those links, you will directly support the channel, any help would be greatly appreciated.
enjoyed the bloopers. This has been Tramley and I'll see you next time. Bye. The housing and affordability compa- <sighs> Unfortunately, due to the central location, the fact that it's a completely new development, and because of the fancy image, the apartments in this dis- Bruh. Czech banks usually provide mortgages with 20% down payments, meaning that to get a mortgage for the smallest apartment in the district, you'd have to save up thir- <sighs> Short-term rentals. The plague of emi-